Zapier makes it easy to connect your web apps together and automate your tedious work. But does that convenience come at a cost? Does Zapier security live up to the standards that your company needs? Today, I'm going to explain why Zapier is safe to use as long as you take the same reasonable precautions that you would with any other web app. And at the end of this video, we'll explore the most stringent of security standards, HIPAA compliance, and see if Zapier can adhere to those regulations too. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we use Zapier and other automation providers to help our members create more time for meaningful work. To learn more about X-Ray and our services, just go to xray.tech. To see more workflow design tutorials and explainers every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and turn on those notifications too. In this video, I'm going to cover how Zapier's security works in basic terms. I'll explain how Zapier allows you to give access and share login credentials for your apps, and I'll share some tips for keeping your data secure in Zapier and all of your software. Let's get started. First, let's talk about how Zapier works and why it needs permissions that might initially make some users uneasy. As an automation provider, Zapier's main purpose is to connect multiple apps and their data together. With Zapier, you can automate the software your team uses every day, like Google Drive, HubSpot, Airtable, Excel, and thousands of other apps that Zapier supports. If you're curious, check out xray.tools to quickly search a complete index list of every Zapier integration, along with five other automation providers. In order to automate these third-party tools, you have to give Zapier access to your apps, and you have to give it permission to act on your behalf. For example, if you want Zapier to perform a certain action whenever you get an email, then you'll need to grant Zapier permission to view your email inbox in Outlook or Gmail. And if you want Zapier to generate documents in Google Drive, you need to give Zapier permission to create data through your Google Drive account. When you're connecting an app to Zapier for the first time, the request for permissions may seem a bit intrusive at first, but they're really just asking for what's necessary to automate with your tools. Without these permissions, you'd be very limited in what you could actually automate. Of course, there are some things you could build with Zapier and public data alone if you really wanted to. You could potentially use Zapier tables to store all your data in the backend, build automations connected to public news feeds, and publish everything to a Zapier interface. But this isn't the way that most people use Zapier most of the time. The vast majority of the time, you'll need to connect your other software to Zapier in order to make the most out of the platform. And to be clear, granting Zapier access to your apps doesn't make Zapier a security risk in and of itself. You can confidently give Zapier the permissions it needs because Zapier is designed to comply with modern security standards for web apps. I won't go into the deep technical detail right now or cover every aspect of Zapier security, but I do want to highlight some key things that you should know about how they handle your data. First off, Zapier has received third-party certification from auditors, so you don't just have to take their word for it that they're being responsible with your apps and data. They've received third-party auditor certification with the AICPA, and you can read the full report on Zapier's security and compliance page. That webpage is linked in the resources board in the description. Zapier is also compliant with the EU-US Data Privacy Framework Program. This ensures that data can be transferred from users in the EU to a US-based company like Zapier while still respecting all of the relevant EU data privacy laws. Next, it's important to remember that every app you connect needs to be authenticated first. The exact methods for authorizing each app vary. It will depend on the app in question and how those developers built their Zapier integration. Zapier encourages OAuth v2 or API keys, and these are the most common authentication methods you'll see. But regardless of the exact method used, you'll always need legitimate credentials to automate an app with Zapier in the first place. For an added layer of security, you can always enable two-factor authentication on your Zapier account. That would require you to use a one-time passcode from an app like 1Password or Google Authenticator in conjunction with your password whenever you want to log in. So even if someone obtained your credentials, they still wouldn't be able to sign in without that temporary code shown in your Authenticator app. Next, whether you're using two-factor authentication or not, your Zapier data is encrypted using 256-bit AES encryption, an international standard for data security. This is the same standard used at checkout whenever you buy something online with a credit card from a reputable retailer. Additionally, any of your data that's stored in Zapier will only be used for your Zaps. As Zapier notes on their data privacy page, your data is not sold or marketed to third parties. And if you do ever run into any issues, Zapier has a security support team available 24-7. In short, there's really no need to worry when you connect your apps to Zapier. They've built a secure, reliable automation platform, and in my time building thousands of Zaps for my team and clients since 2016, 
I have yet to encounter a serious security threat. Everything we've covered so far shows that Zapier lives up to modern security standards for web applications, but Zapier, like any app, can be compromised through human error if you don't take basic security measures. So here are some quick tips that you can follow to ensure that Zapier and your other software isn't at risk. First, and you've probably heard this one before, but it bears repeating, don't reuse passwords. This applies to any and all software. If any app you use suffers a data breach, then your password for that app could be exposed. If you've reused that password in different apps, that makes it easy for malicious actors to access several of your accounts with one set of credentials. So you should always use unique passwords for every app, even if it gets difficult to remember them all. In that case, you can always use a password manager like 1Password to securely store your credentials and even safely share logins as needed with your team. On the subject of collaborating with your team, our next tip is a little more specific to Zapier. Always be intentional about sharing app connections with your team in Zapier. On team accounts, any app connection can either be kept private to you or shared with your team. Sharing a connection with your team can be very convenient since it will allow them to build Zaps using your authenticated account, but it's not always appropriate to share your connections. For instance, you might want to set up a Zap that sends emails from your individual Gmail account in your company's Google Workspace. Sharing your individual Gmail account will allow users to read all the messages in your inbox and even send emails on your behalf via Zapier. You probably don't want to give your entire team the ability to do that. But thankfully, Zapier makes it easy to avoid granting too much access. You have full permission control over all of your app connections in Zapier, and you can choose who to share each connection with, if anyone. Along similar lines, remember that when you connect an app to Zapier, the connection will usually have all of the same permissions and abilities that the associated account has. So for example, let's say there's a document in our Google Drive called Q4 Financial Report. My account, Tom at xray.tech, has full access to view and edit the document, but my coworker, Matt, is view only. If I connect my Google account to Zapier, any zaps I build with it will be able to edit the financial report doc. But if Matt connects his Google account, any zaps he builds won't be able to edit the doc. As this example illustrates, the permissions each user has when they use the app directly will also carry over to using the app automatically via Zapier. However, in some cases, you can set the permission level separately by using a personal access token to authenticate the app. Unfortunately, this option only applies to a few select apps like Airtable. In general, the best approach to using Zapier securely is to stick with the same precautions that you'd use with any web app. Keep your passwords complex and unique, and make sure to only grant necessary and appropriate permissions to your team members. Before we wrap this video, I do want to point out that in spite of its high security standards, Zapier is not HIPAA compliant. HIPAA, or the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act of 1996, is a U.S. law regulating the use of patients' private medical information. Understandably, this law has some very strict requirements for how medical information can be stored and accessed. On their data privacy page, Zapier plainly states that they don't support the use of protected healthcare information covered by HIPAA and won't sign a BAA certifying that your Zaps comply with HIPAA even if you ask. This is certainly frustrating if you're hoping to automate work related to the healthcare industry, but for most Zapier users, it's ultimately not a reason to worry. Zapier still uses industry standard security to protect your data as we've covered in this video. If you do need to build an automation that's HIPAA compliant, reach out to us at our website, xray.tech. You can schedule a free consultation to discuss your plans and your options. As you work online, it's always important to strike a balance between privacy, security, and productivity. There are a lot of malicious actors out there who will try to steal or expose data online, but keeping all your data offline just isn't a practical option. Businesses run on the web, and automation providers like Zapier let you automate that business using industry standard encryption, authentication, and data privacy policies that keep you safe. Just take sensible precautions as you would with any software, and you can confidently use Zapier to automate your work. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the resources board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. 
In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content, challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.